We'd like to buy some stuff, please. No, no, no. You appear to be a black, female, lesbian, transgendered person from Birmingham. I'm sorry, but I don't serve people who like Chinese food. I voted Brexit. But I've got loads of money to pay for it. Look. Your GM doesn't do encumbrance rules, does he? Well, not having that, you'll break the economy. A discussion which comes up in role-playing communities online every two to three months or so is equalities. And some kind of social justice aspect will be picked up, like, do you have gay people in your games? If not, why not? It is their homophobia toward them. Well, I want to talk a little bit about equality in role-playing games. I bet you're against firearms and a anti-life as well. Wanna do you kill a lot of kobolds? To a large extent, if your group agrees to play with a certain theme, that's fine. If you want to run themes of homophobia or uh, racism, if your group is okay with that, then great. But quite often these themes are introduced into games without seeking permission from the group first. Occasionally it's even to shock. Now, it's a very difficult situation because you don't know if a player is going to be triggered or not. And some people argue, well, fuck them if they're triggered, it's their problem. Now, my view on this is that it is perfectly okay to have a character who has an ism, whatever it is, racism, sexism, anti-dwarfism, whatever, doesn't matter. It's okay to have a character like that. The issue arises when you do an entire society like that. And here's why. Hello, Mr. Blake Smith. I could really use my sword fixing. I broke it on a cobalt's head. Bah, humbug. You look like you eat Chinese food. No. I voted Brexit. Excuse me, sir. I would very much like to eat. I'm getting hungry. I have lots of gold. Look. Bugger off. Brexit. When an entire society exhibits a prejudice that your players have to deal with, well, that can, to a certain degree, give some meaning and understanding to the social justice issues that we face. The problem is when those issues are faced by those players outside of the game as well. Because gaming is supposed to be escapism. So if I've got a black player at the table and I run plots about racism, they might appreciate that realism, but they won't be getting the same escapism. But you can still do these plot lines in role playing. The tools are right there in front of us. You just Swap the ism. It might seem like a cheap trick, and well, it is, let's be honest, it's totally a cheap trick. But if you have to live with every day of your life a certain ism that you face every time you go out, every time you're at work, any time you're in public, if you have to deal with that day in, day out, you don't want to deal with that every time you play a game. But these issues are important, and we can explore them in a gaming environment. We just swap the ism so that a player who has to face whatever ism it is during their day-to-day -day life can escape from it and doesn't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about triggering them, but you can have a meaningful exploration of that ism simply by substituting it for something fantasy. Uh, excuse me, come back. I've just found out that Chinese food doesn't exist in this world. Um, young lady. Eh, fantastic. Yes, I'm, I'm glad you're, uh, 
your um, uh, you're okay. You're 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 okay to eat and trade here. That that's fantastic. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that a spell book I see? Fuck off. I voted spells it. Good enough. Your accent sounds like it's from Birmingham, not Scotland. You're terrible at accents. <laughs> <laughs>